Ah, yes, the good old nostalgia of 2007. Well, it feels like it may have been a lifetime ago. 2007 was just a short, well, 14 years ago, but boy, how things have changed since then. Let me remind you, in case maybe you forgot, right? January of 2007, Steve Jobs releases the first iPhone. Woo! Yeah, the first iPhone, that big clunky looking little thick boy that was essentially just an iPod touch with a cellular plan. In 2007, Barack Obama announced that he's taken a crack at being in the big office, and who could forget the sweet, sweet release of the Covenant slang Halo 3, which hit the shelves on September 25th of 2007. While I was busy dual wielding a needler in one hand and a magnum in the other, the US diesel truck manufacturers were up against the wall. Facing stricter regulations regarding emissions, Ford, Chevy, and of course Dodge were all finding creative new ways to make good power and also meet the new regulations set forth by the one and only Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA for short. But what did Dodge do? How'd they make it happen? And what can you expect if you're looking at one of these post-emissions trucks of today? Good news is I'm Dust with the Custom Offsets. You guys can find me on Instagram at dusty.co. And in today's video is all about the one and only 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. Let's get it. Now listen, before we get into this one, I want to make a small disclaimer here. Now I know that Dodge did this whole rebadge thing in 2009, and then they stopped selling their pickups as Dodge Rams and started selling them under the Ram flagship name, right? I get it. However, for the sake of today's video, you're going to hear me use the terms Dodge and Ram interchangeably. They, the change took place right smack in the middle of the production years for the 6.7 Cummins, so I just, I need you guys to give me a little slack on this one and we can just keep her moving forward, okay? Just, just bear with me, right? We're not gonna get that technical. Born from the mandated federal emissions regulations, the 6.7 liter Cummins diesel engine would be introduced to the Dodge pickup line midway through the 2007 model year. Yes, that's 2007.5. This new bigger, beefier brother to the 5.9 would be the cleanest Cummins engine yet, with several new emissions technologies being implemented on the engine. With a displacement of 408 cubic inches, the 6.7 liter Cummins would feature a bigger bore, longer stroke, because who doesn't like that, and make right around 350 horsepower and a whopping 650 earth turning pound feet of torque at just 1500 RPMs, meaning that the torque band is low enough for those of you who like to haul some stuff around from time to time. Just like its GM LML and Ford 6.4 liter power stroke counterpart at the time, the 6.7 Cummins would be the first Cummins in a Dodge pickup to feature an exhaust gas recirculation or EGR system for short, and a diesel particulate filter. Again. <laughs> While early on there were some complaints of Things like the DPF clogging, different PCM flashes were rolled out to address this. And as far as emission systems go, this one's proven to be more on the reliable side, actually. In terms of fueling this monster, Cummins would again work hand in hand with the one and only Bosch to supply both the tried and true CP3 pump as well as the common rail injectors, which now put out approximately 26,000 PSI versus the 23,200 PSI that the 5.9 Cummins had at the fuel rail. That's a lot of pressure. Also, for the first time, the 6.7 Cummins would go away from a fixed geometry turbo and in its place, the spoolie boy vein opening and closing goodness from a variable geometry turbo. For this particular application, Cummins chose the whole set HE35 1VE, which let me tell you, it rocks. Listen, I don't care who you are. You gotta admit, VGTs, they just hit different. All that spool, that high idle boost if the truck is cold. Mm, I love it. Plus having a variable geometry turbo means that you can use that turbo as sort of an exhaust brake if you're towing heavy loads. 
Again, VGTs, they're awesome. You can't change my mind, period. They're just freaking fantastic and I love them. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about the 6.7 Cummins is that it was offered with both an automatic and a manual transmission option. Well, that's not groundbreaking by any means. It is noteworthy that the manual trucks actually came slightly detuned. See, Dodge by this time knew that the manual truck market was slowly dying and because of that, they pulled way back on the R&D or research and development of their manual lineup in their pickup trucks. For this reason, they opted to offer the 6.7 Ram trucks with either the all new, all badass and way more beefy 68 RFE automatic. If you wanted a manual option, you could get one, this time paired with a G56 six speed, which was sourced from the one and only Mercedes Benz, but it would come with a lower torque rating because quite honestly, the Benz just can't hang with all of the torque that the US made Cummins puts out. So here's where it gets a little weird, right? I wanted to make this video and talk about the rest of the truck, talk about interiors and headlights and bed designs and all the cool stuff that you guys love. The problem is, is that Dodge can never make up their freaking minds when it comes to body styles and engines. See, unlike Ford or GM, who generally stick with one body style per engine, or in some cases, several engine variants for one body style, like the Cadillac Silverados, for example, Dodge is over here like, oh, hey, you know, maybe we should use this new Cummins engine in our current truck. Oh, what's that? Oh, we're not changing body styles for another three years? Well, that's too damn bad. If you're not familiar with what we're talking about here, the 6.7 Cummins was introduced midway through the 2007 model year. Again, we talked about that before. That's what makes it a 2007 and a half. Meanwhile, the third gen Cummins would continue to be produced until 2009. And then in 2010, Ram would switch over to the newer, sleeker, and in my opinion, way more badass fourth gen body style. So talk about confusion here, right? You've got a a third gen with a 6.7, you've got a fourth gen with a 6.7, and then further in 2011, a high output variant was offered, making even more torque. In 2013, we would see this trend continue, at which point there would be not one, not two, but three different power variants in these various Ram trucks. All right, so it's 2021. Why on earth would you want a 6.7 Cummins? Well, for starters, when you look at it, they're one of the best bang for your buck trucks on the market right now. Specifically talking about the late third gen trucks here, relatively clean examples can be found for under $20,000, even in the inflated truck market of 2021. This coupled with the reliability and dependability of the inline six Cummins engine, and you really have a solid buy should you be looking for a diesel pickup truck. Heck, I almost pulled the trigger on a sweet third gen before I scooped my LBZ Duramax. It was a whole thing. I had like an Instagram story. I asked everyone here if I should buy it. It was a whole ordeal. In addition to being reliable and priced well, the six sevens just make damn good power and they're extremely modifiable. If power is your thing, then you're in luck. Intakes, exhaust, tuners, gauges, lift pumps, and more are all readily available for these trucks. And if you didn't know, we actually have all that stuff on customoffsets.com. Yeah, that's right. We carry some performance parts now. You guys can check them out, customoffsets.com. Roll the burnout clips. <laughs> All right, now that we did that, what can you expect when you buy a 6.7 Cummins? Six in a row, ready to tow, baby. On a serious note, expect people to constantly ask you if you're free so you can haul their stuff around. Outside of that, if you're north of the rust belt like we are here in good old Wisconsin, then expect to find some rust. Specifically here, rockers, cab corners, and for some god awful reason, the fender arches. Listen, I swear to God, the fender arches, they're like ground zero for rust when it comes to these trucks. I don't understand why, but it always rusts out and it always looks awful. Let's switch gears here and talk about wheels and tires for a second. See, unlike General Motors and their square wheel wells, Mopar seems to understand that much like the earth, tires, they're also round. For that reason, you'll find guys stock height stuffing a 20 by 12 and 33 in there with relatively no issues. There are even a few examples of guys stuffing a 35 in there with a little trimming on stock height, which is freaking nuts. Toss a six inch lift kit in there and you've got plenty of room to clear 37s. Take that GM boys. Right, that's me. I'm gonna go cry in the corner. We never said you were smart. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day though, what makes the 6.7 Cummins so popular? Is it the reliability and dependability of the Cummins engine? Is it the low end torque from the six cylinder paired with the variable geometry turbo? Or maybe yet, is it that the fourth gen was produced for almost a decade and so it's still a super relevant chassis even today? Either way, one thing is for certain, Cummins guys, 
they're pretty proud of their trucks. I mean, just ask them. What do you guys think of the 6.7 Cummins? Would you own one or would you stay far, far away? Let us know down in the comment section below. And as always, if you need wheels, tire, suspension, performance parts, accessories, uh, exterior stuff, wheels, lighting, whatever you need, customoffsets.com. With that, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Holy I'm going to go back to watching TikToks now. <laughs>